Hello everyone and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at another RDA. Now it wasn't until I saw my pal Vaping Bogan's review of this that made me realise that I'd not reviewed it. And I'd had mine since the 20th of uh, 20th of the 10th I think. Um, and according to the email, so anyway. And, um, so I realised that I needed to get this one out to you guys because it's actually a really good RDA and I really have been enjoying it. Now then. There's a bunch of different things to go and talk about on this one. So before we go any more, let's go up close with the Rashomon RDA from Hop and Vape. Come on then. So here we are with the Rashomon packaging. Nice and simple packaging. And I must admit, when this came through, because it's got one of these little kind of flip up things for display, I did think to myself, well, this is just going to be cheap rubbish. However, um, let's get into the insides. You'll see that it's Hop and Vape with hopandvape.com in the bottom there uh, and made in China. A couple of little warnings. And that is it with regards to the packaging. Now, I've already got the RDA out of here. That obviously sits in there. But let me show you the spares because you do get a bunch bunch of spares going on here now then hopefully I can do this without uh, without messing around too much now what we've got here is we've got some spare post grub screws we've got a single coil adapter which I'll show you in a little while we've got an allen key we've got a drip tip 510 adapter and we've got the uh, the squonk pin in there as well now I've been using this in both squonk mode and regular mode and uh, yeah I'm going to tell you all about that when we go up top but the spares package you get with this is absolutely outstanding and uh, this is it this is the beast itself apologies for the state of my fingers there it's just going into winter and that's one of those things anyway this is the Rashomon really heavy engraving um, with uh, with paintwork going on the uh, the outside of that bad boy right there um, I've not had any issues with that and I think it does look very very effective we've got the uh, nice wide board drip tip going on there but it's not too bad so it does feel nice in the old lippy poos we've got an airflow um, hole on both sides there and there in a very similar size to um, the sort of tsunami slash Kennedy kind of of airflow holes um, and you'll see it is a very large two-piece so the top cap doesn't go all the way over the uh, the base there which I think is quite good that obviously means that we don't have any juice coming down underneath here uh, onto the top of your 510 on the mod now and this is the uh, this is the underside obviously you've got the solid pin going on in this one and if I were to be remotely prepared I could show you what I've got um, on the uh, on the other one, on the squonk one, you can see there that is with the squonk pin attached in the middle there. So uh, we do have a little bit of juice going around. Now then, um, let's get back in focus. There we go. Um, nice and simple. Nothing really super special or exciting to tell you about on the underside really. Um, but let's get inside. That's where all the magic happens. Now one of the good things or one of the things that confused me about this one is um, from, from the uh, from the drip tip side of things I uh, I saw that under there and that does kind of protrude a little bit from underneath that top cap which is nicely belled by the way that is that a word belled but it is now um, it's a nice curve going on there which does help get that flavor right into your mouth hole but this drip tip is a little bit too long so I imagine that uh, what that's doing is that is kind of poking through underside the uh, condensation is coming up or the vapor is coming up through the inside of the bell cap or the, the cap there and then kind of before you get any 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 fluid if you like into your mouth that's kind of a bumper for it right there but uh, I did want to change this out and I thought to myself I wonder how that happens and I was trying to pull it and that wasn't working and then I was hitting it with a hammer and all sorts of things turns out it's a really light unscrew <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but there we go. Nice solid threads on there. And I say I was knocking crap out of this with hammer, and that didn't come out. So uh, <laughs> it's a good solid piece of kit. But like I say, it does protrude a little way on the inside of that threaded portion there, um, which may help reduce kind of the, uh, the 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 sort of spit back you get when you have extra juice going on inside the cap. I don't know, but uh, it may just be a happy coincidence. Right, and here we go with the deck. And it's a funky little deck. It is a little bit, kind of a little bit recoily, kind of a little bit 
velocity um but uh but you know i like it and it does seem to work really really well now one of the things that uh, i've noticed about this one obviously um the way this is positioned is you've got a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom so you can have your coils going where you ha you'll have one lead going the top and one lead going the bottom without having to make them come out on the same sort of plane which is jolly useful and the other good thing is as well you've got the uh, clamps going down onto your wire so when you are using things like dual core claptons i just spun these up on the daedalus just before i uh, i came or i started the camera on here um when that goes on there the um the the clamp will or the, oh that'll be my phone the the grub screw rather there we go that's the right word will uh, will screw down on top of the wire rather than trying to bunch it up and uh, with a velocity style obviously when you're going in that way you've got your 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 wire going in that way and it's getting squashed up that way so um Hopefully that makes sense, me rambling on. But uh, but yeah, that we'll we'll put those in in a second. But um, no, I really like it. I really like the design of this. They could have maybe even kind of I don't know. I was wondering if they could have kind of moved them over a little bit and not really. I mean, the idea of having this in the in the middle of the coil not really necessary to be honest with you because you can obviously maneuver your coil pretty easily on that one but uh, all in all super deep juice well super deep juice well to worry about there which is has been great for me it's been great as a squonker and as a dripper now if i pop that in here now i'm measuring that to be about seven mil make sure that's on zero Dropping that down, yeah, just under seven mil, somewhere around that way. Um, but it is a fair old whack, it really is. And there's lots of nice space as well, um, beside either of the uh, either of the the air holes. Um, on the top and the bottom there, which I think is great. Now then, uh, we do have slightly raised from the deck there, so if there is any juice that comes down onto here and collects in this area, that's not automatically going to go down your juice hole, which is absolutely superb. And uh, all in all, that's about it. Not really a great deal else I can tell you. It looks as though we've got a peak insulator down there on the positive pin, which is on this side, and uh, I believe we do have a gold pl a, a uh, gold-plated 510. But uh, no, we've got a slightly protruding. 510 as well which uh, which looks okay and that's it ladies and gentlemen so what I'm going to do now is just going to quickly throw in a build and then we can have a little play with it ah one of the things that I do like about this as well is I can use my 1.5 mil um, um, Allen key to undo these grub screws rather than the sort of the smaller 1.2s um, that just means to me I can get a better purchase when I am tightening things up now I think that uh, one or two other reviewers had issues with these grub screws personally I've not had a problem as yet but now I'm about to build on camera that may change who knows nice big holes we've got going on in here um, get some fairly hefty size builds going on and uh, I've not had anything that I've not been able to fit in there, to be honest with you. Okay, now this is what I was talking about with regards to the uh, the wire going in and being nice and sort of um, flattened. You can see there that I've not had to twist the wire. It's not done anything wobbly. They're starting to bend up and I've, I've flattened this as well. So um, you have got more of a width than you have height. Um, and it does seem to just sit in there really, really nicely. So here we are with those uh, those coils in there. That's going to come down to around about 0.15 mark. 
They look ropey. I've not really lined them up very well, but they are dual core 26 gauge, 36 gauge Clampton on the outside and flanned over three and a half mil bit. So we've got a fair size beastie going on in there. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, having a good old vape on this because I do like this coil. But like I said, super easy. I've got them sitting over the air holes um, nice and easily. I've got that kind of length going out that way and that way. Um, all in all, straightforward little coil really. Okay, let's get it wicked and vaped. Ho, so this is the bad boy wicked up. Now I did just trim a little bit of wick over the top there, but uh, nothing too massive going on there. Just plenty of space in that deck. Now when you do um, get this all wicked up and ready to go, please make sure that your wick isn't touching the sides of the air holes because um, juice will always look for the sort of the the path of least resistance. So if it's touching the sides, even though they're slightly raised then uh, what that's going to mean is that um, you will get some juice come out of your air hole, which obviously you don't want to do. Now one of the great things about this is while I'm painting on lots of juice going on here, um, you can just dump it straight down the middle, like so, and it, it's got just a lovely deep juice well to sort itself out with. There we go, bang on the money at 0.15. By the way, juice-wise, I'm using fruit custard banana from uh, it's from Vaptasia. These guys, I think that's the the fruit and custard line, um, and we're also using fuzz from the Yorkshire Vapor for the wicking. Right there we go. Now then, just realised I completely didn't watch what I was doing. I got juice everywhere. Anyway, let's go up top and vape it, shall we? Okay, so that was the up close and personal with the Rashomon. Now, um, just as I built in that up close, I've got those Claptons going on in here at the moment. But just to show you what it's like in other modes, I've got it in squonk mode sitting on my um, homemade box there. In single coil mode, uh, just with regular kind of a round wire build that I've been rocking for a little while. It's not the tidiest, but you get the idea. That's about nine wraps of 24 gauge stainless steel. And you'll notice that I do have that running in single coil mode as well. So uh, yeah, let's just have a little look at this bad boy first, shall we? Now the name Rashomon seems a bit weird, however Wikipedia tells me the Rashomon effect is a term used to describe the circumstance when the same event is given contradictory interpretations by different individuals involved. Now. That to me is quite apt on this because the, the, the Rashomon certainly does seem to draw from a whole bunch of different influences in order to kind of have the features that it has. So from the posts, a little bit of velocity, a little bit reloady, a little bit kind of like that. Um, having the uh, the airflow a little bit kennedy -y, a little bit sort of tsunami-y. Um, it's got a little bit of juice. Um, and you know, so it does. It does seem to draw in influences from a whole bunch of different areas. Um, but I, the actual end result on this, I think, is absolutely superb. Now, what I'm going to do? Let's have a little vape on this one first. This is, like I say, in squonk mode, uh, 45.5 watts, uh, and it's a 0.54 build on here. Now then, hopefully, my button won't stick. It certainly produces the flavour in single coil is okay, but it's got a fair amount of um, air coming in, and obviously that airflow is non-adjustable. So uh, much like a number of RDAs that we've seen in the past with non-adjustable airflow, you kind of get what you get. But uh, it's going to be for some people, but not for others. All in all, I think it that it's really not bad at all. The flavour for me, though, does shine when you do put it in, in uh, dual coil mode or if you're using Claptons or indeed a mixture of the both. That's why I've put these those flattened Claptons in this bad boy. Now, this one I've got at 77.7 .7 watts on the Chieftain. And let's have a toke on that. Clouds for days. Clouds, four days. Uh, 
Now, I think the flavour on it is pretty darn reasonable. Maybe not the absolute best, but it's uh, it's certainly very very realistic for a uh, for a, an RDA, especially an RDA with this much variation, with this many spares, and for what I imagine is going to be a reasonably low cost. The re the reason I say uh, the reason I say uh, I imagine a reasonably low cost is because I, because I can't find anywhere with it in stock, and uh, that means that I don't know if it's because they've not released it yet or it's just not been picked up on um or august 8th um i don't know the reasons for that however if anyone should get hold of one of these or if, if you find out of any stockists of these please put a link down below because i think these are absolutely tip top they really are just a cloudy monster it really is now then um, the top cap can get a little bit on the warm side, but that's kind of par for the course when it comes to these kind of um, RDAs, in my opinion. It's going to pop a little bit more juice on there. In fact, one of the great things that I do like about this, because of the way you're wicking either side, the space in between the two posts, you can just pick it up and uh, get a few drops going down the middle there. And away you go. Completely missed the RDA at one point there. Look at that. Good work, Dean. Good work. I tell you, what a lemon. Right, let's have another one. Now, the airflow does seem pretty unrestricted. Um, well, I say unrestricted. It's pretty damn wide open, but um, there is a very slight there, and because it, the air is going in at a right angle, it goes in and then straight up. It does make a little bit of noise, but it's certainly not one of the loudest RDAs that I've ever used. Um, all in all, I think the uh, I think the the machinery on it is pretty darn good. I think the uh, the airflow on it from from a cloud point of view is absolutely fantastic. Obviously, you can single coil it, so you've got that as a great option as well. But that doesn't change the airflow in as much much as um, you, it's not adjustable. Now, when you do cut that down to just the single airflow option, it's a little bit whistlier. But um, but you certainly can feel that restriction. So if you get yourself a decent coil build in there, then you're going to get a good vaping experience, in my opinion. I like it. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, I like it. It's been something that I have been using for um, near on a couple of months now, six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. And I've used it in both squonk mode and in, in just power mode for clouds. And I've had a jolly good time with it. Is it as good as an RDA? Or Sorry, is it as good as an RDA? It's an RDA. Um, is it as good as a Kennedy or a Tsunami? I've never had a tsunami, so I can't tell you about that one, to be honest with you. I know that they certainly have a massive following of their own, but I really like the way this post situation is. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, let's have a little look airflow-wise. Now, I've got the original 22mm Kennedy going on here. Now, the airflow on this... They're pretty much the same airflow wise, but um, as in volume, but uh, I do think that this one is just a hint on the sort of the noisier side, just a hint. Um, this is 24 mil, so you do have that extra space on the inside and looks good on a bunch of these chunkier mods coming through now. Uh, so all in all, there's not really a great deal else I can tell you without being able to tell you if they're available or when they're available, which I have messaged the uh, Hop and Vape company that makes this. And uh, as soon as I do find out, I will put a link down below. But uh, in the meantime, keep your eyes open for this bad boy, because if you like an airy, cloudy um, RDA, which I hopefully think this is going to be a very reasonably affordable um, sort of affair as well, then I think this could be certainly something to put on your list. And like I say, you do have the, the Drip Tip 510 adapter as well if you do want to kind of try and focus that flavour in a little bit more right onto your tongue. But uh, I've not really used that that much. I've tried it, but I've not really used it that much because I've not really had the need to because I think it works really well. I think the air in really complements the air out with, uh, with this size Drip Tip.
Anyway, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Dean the Vaping Biker. This has been the Rashomon from Hop and Vape. This was sent on to me directly from the manufacturer. Obviously, in no way influences my opinion as per usual. You guys know that, but thank you very much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and go and have it launched!